today I'll be talking about how you can use MDX with Remix to improve the accessibility and usability of content. I am a senior software engineer working in educational technology at Newzella, and I'm very interested in open source, MDX, and creative coding. Uh, so if you're interested in any of those things, let's chat uh, more later. And I also founded a meetup group for women and non-binary React developers. And if you're interested in seeing these slides or any of the code associated with this presentation, uh, you can go to links.monica.dev, which is where this QR code navigates to, and you will be able to view the source code as well as the presentation and resources. So let's get started. What is MDX? If you're not familiar with MDX, you can think of MDX as Markdown that's supercharged with JSX. So you have the simple syntax of Markdown, but as needed, you're able to leverage components to make your content more interactive and customize and extend the markup. Similar to how with TypeScript, you have JavaScript, but you're extending it with types. And what makes me really excited about MDX is I think it's a great educational tool, and it really takes advantage of different web technologies. In particular, it can be used to create interactive technical documentation. This is an example of how Prisma is using MDX in their documentation site. They have a React component within an MDX file, which is like a markdown file. And this component allows visitors to switch the syntax of the code sample based off of, or the language of the code sample based off of their preferred language. Similarly, uh, another site that uses uh, MDX is React Docs. They did a huge overhaul uh, that went out of beta earlier this year, and they have over 600 interactive examples, and a lot of them are powered by MDX. So if you go to the new doc site, you'll see that there's sandboxes where you can start building a React application without having to set up everything locally. You can open it in a code sandbox. And there's a lot of interactive checkpoints. And if you're interested in using MDX, then you should get familiar with Unified. And Unified is a huge ecosystem with over 500 different open source packages that allow us to work with content as structured data, also known as abstract syntax trees. It's also a core package that is used to inspect and transform content with plugins. If you're not familiar with abstract syntax trees, they're more verbose versions of human readable code. So on the left-hand side is, is an example of a loader function, and on the right-hand side is that same function, but in the abstract syntax tree uh, representation, which is a lot more verbose. I'm not going to pause the, the animation, uh, but I think it illustrates that it's more, more verbose. But you don't have to get super familiar with abstract syntax trees in order to take advantage of MDX. You can leverage the Remark and Rehype plugins within the Unified ecosystem to transform your content. Specifically, Remark plugins are used when you want to transform Markdown, and Rehype plugins are when you want to transform HTML. And if you've ever used Prettier or ESLint to format or lint files that you've written with Markdown, they're using Unified under the hood. Or if you've ever submitted a challenge on FreeCodeCamp, they use Unified to parse the challenges that are submitted. And I was first introduced to Unified through Gatsby, which uses it to parse or to pull in content into their GraphQL um, structure. And of course, today I'll be focusing on MDX, which uses Unified to combine Markdown with JSX. And the great news is if you are using Remix, you can get support for MDX straight out of the box by adding a file to your routes, uh, to your routes folder with uh, the .mdx extension or importing those into some of your routes. And this will build all of your MDX files at build time, and it's the fastest way to get started with MDX and Remix. However, if you're looking for more customization with how you are using uh, MDX, then you want to look at a tool like MDX Bundler, which gives you a lot more control and also more ability to customize. And if you wanted to build like, your MDX files on demand, you definitely would want to go and look at alternatives such as MDX Bundler. So today, my talk is going to be focused on using Remix and MDX Bundler. 
So first, we'll install MDX Bundler and ES Build. So MDX Bundler uses ES Build and MDX V2 to quickly compile and build our MDX alongside its dependencies. So in terms of actually rendering our MDX to the page, we can create a MDX file. So it's a markdown file where you have markdown, but you also are able to import React components directly into the markdown. So if we're not using MDX Bundler, we're actually able to use this functionality with Remix outside um, just without any additional setup. And we will also have access to route functions like loader, action, and handler. However, if we want to do more customization, we will use MDX Bundler. So in order to actually render this component, let's have a loader function that actually calls MDX Bundler to transform our MDX content. And then we'll be able to render our MDX component. So what that looks like is we'll have an MDX Bundler function that only runs on our server. And that calls bundle MDX, which is an export from MDX Bundler. It takes in a string representation of our MDX file, and then it returns front matter and code. So you can think of the front matter of the metadata associated with your markdown, and the code would be the body of your file, which is the content as that includes both the markdown content and the wrapped content. And, and our loader function within our route is where we would actually call that function we were just looking at. So we can get our content. So this, in this example, the content is in a local file. So we're on a specific um, path. We get the content for that path. And then we pass in that, the like, string representation of that file into the um, asynchronous function that we were just looking at that parses the MDX. And then we're able to return the JSON. And then when we're actually rendering the data, we have access to that data that we just called in our loader function. And we can use a special uh, component from MDX Bundler called MDX, get MDX component, where we pass in the code that we were able to get from our loader function. And then we can render the component to the page. So now that we have that component inside of our page where we're rendering the MDX, uh, with MDX, you can actually replace different HTML elements. So if we wanted to replace a block quote or an H3, we can use this syntax to say that we want to replace that specific element. And this is like a huge uh, object that just shows all of the different uh, HTML elements that you can replace with MDX, meaning every single time you write markdown that uses that element, it would automatically be replaced. So just if we wanted to only replace, for example, anchor tags and paragraphs, it would look like this, where we pass in this components prop with those two um, values. And this is an example of what a custom paragraph, for example, could look like. It's silly. It's basically taking in the paragraph that we wrote in Markdown and then appending a another paragraph to it saying Sparkle is powered by MDX. So I just wrote a bunch of paragraphs, and then it automatically translated it to have this paragraph appended to it. Uh, another example of the component shadowing is for, we could overwrite all of our links. So we could have some logic that says if we have an internal link, we always want to use the link from Remix. And if we decide that we want to uh, prefetch that we can um, we can indicate that in our component so that way we're able to preload that page as needed but for external links we definitely don't want to use the uh, the remix link we want to use a regular anchor tag and we could have it op uh, if we want them to open in a new tab we definitely want to follow accessibility best practices and have a note for folks who are using a screen reader where it would inform them that it will open in a new tab. And so what that would look like for if we're replacing the link component, if we wrote this link on the left where we have the blog uh, link, uh, if you look into the HTML, it would have a regular anchor tag that links to the blog post or to the blog route. But on hover, because we're using the remix link, it, you'll see that it's 
preloading that data so that it's hopefully available by the time someone clicks on the link. Whereas if we have an external link, we're using that in that same like syntax, it will instead show the markup that we expect if we have an external link, where if it's opening in a new tab, we're going to indicate that in uh, the DOM. And in general, we want to make sure that we're writing HTML that is more human readable, uh, because that's going to be like, more accessible for automated tools to navigate and decipher. So it's good to avoid spans and divs, which don't really convey semantic meaning. And instead, if there's opportunity to use uh, one of the over 100 HTML, HTML elements that has more of a meaning to, to use that, and also using text when possible instead of images uh, to convey information. So if we know that we want to implement certain best practices or extend the, make our, the mark, or make the HTML that our markdown is generating more semantic, we can leverage remark and rehype plugins to accomplish that. So for example, there's remark sectionize that will automatically group paragraphs with their headings into sections, which is more helpful to navigate than just a pile of headers and paragraphs that don't have a clear relationship. Uh, there's also a remark alley emoji, which will add additional markup to a, any usage of emojis. So I'll add an ARIA label with the name of the emoji, as well as um, role, so it's treated as an image. And then there's a rehype autolink headings and rehype slug, which are both helpful for navigating. And there's also a bunch of other like React components that you can use that are helpful uh, with MDX. And in general, people don't really read on the web. People skim. So how can we make that easier if we have a huge technical document? We can add a table of contents. So having a component where we'll render every single heading and link to it, and then we can have that show up either at the top of the document or where we think makes sense to allow people to quickly navigate and see what sections the document will cover. So let's create a rehype plugin that will allow us to use that component we were just looking at. So if we have an MDX file with a bunch of H2s, such as navigation, accessibility, and user experience, let's return all of those H2s. Um, we can use this package units util visit to uh, navigate the abstract syntax tree and visit every single element that is an H2 and then find the text associated with that element and return the text as well as the ID associated with that H2 element. And so what this function should output if we give it the following MDX file that has these multiple H2s, it should, it should return an array of objects that contain both IDs and text. And the ID you'll see, for example, for user experience, it has a dash because that's the slugified version of that text. And that's how we would actually navigate to it if we were going to click through. And then to actually use the function or the to actually use what we just wrote, the rehype headings, we will update this rehype plugins array where we bundle our MDX and include the rehype headings um, plugin. And we'll have access to the headings that we were exporting from that function. Please, uh, please note that we do need to have headings that are actually clickable and have slugs. So um, rehype slug and rehype autolink headings are helpful in that regard. And then in terms of actually rendering it on the page, we can update our components. Our, the components that we're passing to our components to include a table of contents. And then for that table of contents, we're loading the headings from our loader function and then passing it in. And then we can render that in, a, in our MDX if we choose to by just um, including like a table of contents statement inside of our MDX. But if we omit that, then it won't be included in the, um, on the page. So sometimes we also want to provide users a lot of information. Some of it may not be super 
relevant, or some of it may be just like kind of going down a rabbit hole. So we could add some footnotes. And we want to make sure that we can navigate back and forth between our footnotes and our footnote refs. And we want these footnotes to be accessible. So we should have um, both the um, IDs and hrefs so we can navigate back and forth between the footnote and the footnote ref. And there's also some additional ARIA attributes and rules that we would like to include. So we could write this up from scratch every single time, write the HTML that we would like to output. But as you're editing a document, things need to be renumbered and could get maybe messed up where the numbers in the document don't match up with what's actually rendering in the footnote section. Um, so that might not be ideal. We could use a custom footnotes uh, component as needed when we want to add footnotes to our document. Or um, we could extend our version of Markdown to use GitHub flavored Markdown, which by default will support footnotes. Uh, the version of Markdown that MDX is using is Common Mark, which is like the core specification for Markdown. So it supports the very core functionality of Markdown. But a lot of times, if you've interacted with Markdown, you maybe have interacted with an extension of it. And GitHub flavored Markdown is also, like MDX, an extension of Common Mark. So if we want to take the uh, approach of using a footnotes component, we can use this package React Alley footnotes, which is currently up to date with the standards. And it will give us access to a footnotes provider, a footnotes ref, and footnotes. Um, and then wherever we want to render footnotes, we can wrap that in a footnotes provider and then include these footnote refs. Uh, wherever we want to actually have like a footnote. So the description would be what would you would see at the bottom of the page. And within this footnotes provider, you can have fo multiple footnote refs, and you would only have one footnotes where you would render everything. And that will have like the appropriate markup. So in our use case, if we wanted every single MDX component to have access to this footnotes provider, then we would wrap it. Um, otherwise, we can pass in the footnotes provider as a prop and then just wrap the individual MDX files. Um, and then we also need to make sure we're passing in the footnote ref and the footnotes so we're able to use those inside of our, um, inside of our file. But depending on if you don't want this to be global, there's also the option to just directly import these components as well. And then in terms of what this would look like, um, this is an MDX file, but we have these footnote refs throughout, and it will output like the footnote section at the bottom where everything is numbered appropriately, and we didn't have to keep track of anything. And then the other option I had mentioned in terms of if we wanted to get support for footnotes is we could use GitHub flavored Markdown, so extending the version of Markdown that we're using to for our MDX, and we'll be able to get that functionality by adding this GFM remark plugin um, to our remark plugins array. And that will give us the footnotes, but it also gives us the ability to strike through content with the um, double squigglies, or we could add create task lists, et cetera. So that may also be an option depending on how you want to leverage uh, Markdown in your site. And in summary, I believe MDX is a powerful tool to enhance and customize the user experience of educational content. And we can replace native HTML elements with component shadowing. We can also import custom components. And we can transform MDX with Unis Util Visit, Remark, and Rehype plugins. Those are some of the ways you can transform MDX. There's way too many to cover in one talk. And yeah, thank you, uh, Remix. Uh, if anyone wants to find me on the web, I'm on Twitter at InDigitalColor. My website is monica.dev, and that's also me on Blue Sky. And all of the code for this site is at uh, monica with the zero slash remix dash mdx dash docs. Um, and so that has a deployed version of a site that has of various examples that I went through, but in a more like cohesive way, so you could just see everything in one place. Um, so yeah, thank you.